Welcome to another Dasher Cam Tesla adventure video. You join me at about 50% state of charge for part two of the drive to Bellevue, Washington. If you would like to watch the Cybertruck video or miss part one, they are both linked above and in the description below. Well, friends, I just wanted to do a quick check-in while we're here. This is probably the first and only look of the car after I washed it yesterday. I think I did a pretty okay job. Definitely not perfect, but at least the rims look good, guys. At least the rims look good, and there doesn't really seem to be much excess debris and such on the uh, on the rockers there. Unfortunately, I do have some water spots. You can't really see them at the moment, but they are definitely there. Not not great, but not horrible either. I'm pretty happy with the way that it came out. Definitely took quite some time, but. There it is. There's your look of the clean-ish scuffed car. Probably the last time that it will be nice and clean-ish like this for quite some time. But, hey, there it is. Looking looking pretty darn good, if I do say so myself. Um, unfortunately, I do have a couple of water spots, but uh, what do you do? That's just kind of the way that it goes sometimes. Any guesses where we are headed with respect to getting some food. I love those gold wing doors on the Model X. I think that that is super cool, the way that they pop out like that. Um, yeah, any guesses? If you guys want to, go ahead and leave a comment in, uh, you know, below and let me know where you think that we're going to stop. Uh, a couple of you probably have the right answer. Uh, there is a special spot that we're going to stop at to eat before we get up to Bellevue and check out the ever so elusive Cybertruck. I'm not even sure if the Cybertruck is really there, guys. I really don't know. I'm just going off of what some rando person put on the internet that supposedly, allegedly, maybe possibly, there's one in Bellevue, Washington. And you know what? If not, well, at least it'll be a good fail video. And I've gotten some fun content on the way regardless. Oh, crap. I meant to make a video while I was there. Damn it. We'll have to make a video the next time. But anyways, life is good. Just merging back onto I-5. Um, 70 mile per hour speed limits in Washington. Thank you, Washington. Appreciate that. Uh, if, if you guys could maybe chat to Oregon, let, let them know that 65 is just a little bit too little of a speed limit. There's no need to only be going 65. We, we can we can handle 70 mile per hour in Oregon. Most of, a lot of us do. A lot of us going at least 80, 85 in the left lane, you know what I'm saying? So, Oregon, let's let's get that speed limit up. All right. Gosh, it is just beautiful out here. What a nice day. As you can tell, it's fall. Everything is kind of dead, but not dead. You know how it goes around here. It's just absolutely gorgeous. All right. I'll catch up with you at either 25% or we're going to go eat, whichever one comes first.
right, friends, we have made it to a secret undisclosed location for lunch slash dinner, depending on what uh, what time frame I'm on here. Um, really, really beautiful view of Mount Rainier whenever we were coming off the interstate just now. I, I can't tell you how, how big Mount Rainier is. It is just massive. Um, but anyways, we're going to go ahead and pop in. I just wanted to check in with you guys. 28% state of charge. I'm going to leave it on 70. Let's do 70%, uh, 70 degrees. Auto, low, everything looking good. We're going to pretty much simulate dog mode. I'm just not going to put it in dog mode. We're just going to leave it in keep. Um, I really think that the only difference between keep and dog mode, I could be wrong, but is that dog mode shows the little screen here and says, hey, my owner will be back. It's it's temperate in here. Everything's fine. Um, since James isn't with me, we're not going to put it in dog mode. Everything's fine. But here are the stats since our last charge. 189 miles, 52 kilowatt hours burned, and 276 watt hour per mile. It says that we will arrive with an estimated 11% state of charge whenever we get into Bellevue. Um, so we're, we're almost there, guys. We are on the last stretch of this trip. I'm pretty excited. I think that the car has done really, really well. Autopilot's been great. Everything has been pretty smooth sailing. Um, we're about to get into some of the worst traffic of the trip. So I figured before I get hangry, I better eat. And then, uh, you know, we'll go jump into that Tacoma, Washington traffic. If any of you have ever driven through Tacoma, Washington, oh boy, it is really a thing. Uh, they, they do not drive very nicely around here. So, um, so yeah, we're, we're going to see what ends up happening. Um, I'm documenting the entire dash cam footage. I'm going to put that up as well. I'd be interested to know what you guys think. Would anyone be interested in like a screensaver style video where, all right, we lost that camera. Would anybody be interested in a screensaver style video where I put up um, the entire drive, maybe I'll edit out little bits here, like the time that I'm gonna spend in Chick-fil-A, um, but the entire drive essentially of this coast up to, you know, you know, up to Seattle from Albany. Would, would anybody be interested in that? Um, the, the only kicker is that it would be silent. So you'd be able to choose your own adventure as far as what music you might like to, to play in the background. Um, that's something that I was thinking about doing since it is going to be a pretty neat trip. I don't know if any of you guys have taken the trip up the I-5 corridor from, you know, Portland-ish area up to Seattle, but, um, yeah, uh, that's what I'm thinking. I think that I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. I have other lots of dash cam footage from my trip whenever I went across the country in the Prius. Um, so I'm, I'm trying, to, trying to play around with the idea. Is, is there any market for silent dash cam videos? If you guys have made it this far in the video, you know, please feel free to leave a like and a comment. Let me know what you guys are thinking so far. Um, I know that this video is going to be a really, really long one. So if you guys like my content, you know, please let me know if you guys think that silent dash cam footage of just an entire drive at 1x speed, just something for you to put on in the background would be kind of a cool thing to let ride. Um, you know, maybe a relaxing drive kind of thing is the way that I'm going to be marketing that. I'd be interested to know your thoughts. So please leave me a comment. Let me know. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to, uh, to enjoy my videos and, you know, enjoy your time with me. So anyways, I'm going to get into Chick-fil-A. I am starving. I've been looking forward to this all day. I can't wait to get in there. I'll see you guys whenever we get done. Who knows what percentage state of charge we'll be at, but I'll be sure to let you know whenever I come back in the car. First impressions of this Chick-fil-A, there's scuffed. Being, being so good. Such a good little car. But first impressions of this Chick-fil-A are, it smells like weed out here. I guess that that's how you know that you're in Washington, in the West Coast, because weed's legal here, so it just smells like weed all the time. Maybe not all the time, but a lot of the time. Hey, what's good, Alabama? How you living, dog? Damn, I bet you that that thing was efficient getting across the country. I can only imagine. How much do you guys think that they spent driving across the country in that thing? I bet you $2,000.
Leave your comments below. Let me know. Look, look at Mount Rainier out there. Just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, all right, let's let's get in here and see what kind of foods we can get in the Chick-fil-A. Look at that. That that should be all electric, guys. We we should be all electric by this point. Oh yeah. Oh, boy. Well, believe it or don't, it was their pleasure. Who knew? You guys probably don't know this, but I'm going to go ahead and let you know. Chick-fil-A was actually my first job, 15 years old, at the mall in Ocala. My first job. Jason was my boss, if I remember correctly. Made like $6.50 an hour or something to that effect. I can't remember how much I made back then, but... It was pennies on the dollar, guys. Pennies on the dollar. And, you know, I was 15, worked a couple hours a week, you know, whatever. I was only able to do the cash register. Then I turned 16, told Jason, Jason, listen, I got a car, dog, and I need, I need some hours. Jason proceeded to not give me no hours, none. Might as well have taken me off the schedule. He gave me, like, one day a week or some, something. I left there at 16 and went to Target. And I worked at Target for about five years. During that time at Target, I learned how to do Starbucks. And I left Target after about five and a half years, five years, I can't remember exactly, and went to work at Starbucks corporate for a little while. So, just in case anybody thinks that Cam doesn't know what he's talking about with, like, food service or... Having worked like, you know, young person jobs. Um, yes, I have. I know what I'm talking about. And delivery service is not for the faint of heart. It is not a high school job. So you may think it is not. Um, and it takes a little bit more finesse than just pick up the order, put it down, and go on about your day. So please, please... Send a little bit of love to your delivery driver whenever they're out there. You know, they're out there hustling for you guys. They're out there, you know, in inclement weather. They're out there driving around with all kinds of crazy other drivers. It might be dark where they're at. Um, you know, just all kinds of things. So, so please, please consider tipping your delivery drivers properly. If, you're, if you don't have enough money to tip, then you probably shouldn't be using apps like DoorDash or Uber Eats or Postmates or... Grubhub or Bite Squad, you, you probably shouldn't be using those apps if you can't tip. It is not a, it, it, it is really not a service for the everyday folk to be abusing. Um, you know, we're, we're risking our lives out here bringing you food. Um, you know, a lot of the time people don't leave their lights on. It's hard to see at nighttime. It's really actually kind of rude to not leave your light on at night. And then on top of that, not tipping, it's just kind of like, why are you even like alive right now? Probably, probably should go and pound salt up your ass or something. So anyways, just a couple of quick thoughts. Don't forget to tip your delivery driver. And by the way, quick question. If I slip and fall in your driveway and there was no light on and it was slippery and stuff, who do I sue? Do I sue you? Probably sue you because it's on your property, right? All right, very good. Anyways, let's go ahead and continue on about our journey. Um, we are still at 27% state of charge. We left it on manual keep at right around 70, 71 degrees in the car. Um, since our last charge, we've gone 189 miles, burnt 52 kilowatt hours, and our average watt hour per mile is 276. So... We're going to pop back on the road here. It says that we're going to arrive to Bellevue at 7% state of charge. So we'll go ahead and uh, and head out and see what kind of an adventure uh, we will find on our way there. Right now, the sun is about to set. It's 4.30 p.m. Again, November 25th, 2023. And it is just a beautiful day. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this right, guys. I don't think I am.
friends, you draw, you join me at a 25% Stata Charge. I know that we just saw each other at Chick-fil-A, but I wanted to check in with you guys and let you know how the drive was going. Absolutely terrible. Absolutely terrible. This is the worst traffic I've been in pretty much since the last time I was up in this area. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, it was pretty bad in Portland earlier. But damn if it isn't bad here. All right, 25% state of charge. Uh, we're at 194 miles since charge. 54 kilowatt hours burned and 275 watt hour per mile. Really doing pretty A-OK. -okay. Um, you know, it, it was, it read like 36 degrees at my house today. Um, you know, again, I did precondition the car. I warmed it all up and stuff. I probably preconditioned it for a good like hour or so. You know, had it juicing all the all the juice that the level two would give it um, for about an hour and charged right up to 100. And now we're at 25 percent. So 194 miles in 75 percentage points. Cam, do the math on that. Whatever whatever that math is, there it is. Things are going really well. Um, by all accounts, you know, in certain respects, this this car should easily go 240 miles on a charge, probably even better, maybe closer to 260, 270 during the summertime. Um, but yeah, wow, I I'm I am completely amazed. I love this car. It's it's been amazing. So I'll catch back up with you guys. I don't know, maybe whenever we get to Bellevue um, at this point. So, and then I'll let you know where I'm gonna hang out because we're gonna we're gonna pull up to Bellevue at like eight to six percent somewhere around in there. Um, so yeah, I'll catch back up with you guys in just a few minutes. Yeah. 
second blues, yeah, I blues day. Feel like Kiki, I'm about to peek, peek. I'ma give you sneak peek. Your emotions rise like tides, and I'm just living by the sun. friends you join me at our stopping location we are at the downtown park in bellevue washington uh the tesla center is right behind me if i'm not mistaken but we are actually here because there were some charge point units so i went ahead and signed up for charge point i guess that i didn't already have a charge point account not really 100 percent sure but anyways i've got my charge point account ready to go now so i should just be able to plug in over here on uh, on this level two charger so i'm gonna go ahead and hop out get ready to do that and then we're headed over to tesla to go see that cyber truck i'm so excited um let's just go over the stats real quick so we are at eight percent state of charge and our cinch charge is 246 miles we've burned 66 kil 66 kilowatt hours and our uh, average watt hour per mile is 267 watt hour per mile so honestly better efficiency than i could have expected better efficiency than the car expected um, as you may remember whenever we started our journey uh, the car said that we would get here at five percent state of charge so here are some of those stats we've consumed 91.6 which was 11.3 percent more than the estimated vehicle consumption but I'm not really sure what it's going off of because again whenever we left the house it said that we were going to get here at about five percent state of charge so anyways there are the numbers for you guys um i really appreciate you tagging along let's go ahead and hop out and go plug in the car all right so got my tesla adapter here just gonna open up the charge point charge port adapter boom or charge port rather Okay, How are you? All right, here we are. So if I'm not mistaken, it is going to be, if we can get it to zoom in, there we go. If I'm not mistaken, it will be something to the effect of like 29 cents per kilowatt hour. So, all right, looking pretty good so far. We're charging up. Oh, man, Let's get out of here. So I feel like maybe there was a parade or something that just happened. It seems awfully magical around here right at the moment. People all over the sides of the streets. This is a real winter wonderland out here, tell you what. All right, let's, let's turn this off. I don't know about that music. All right, guys, so I realized that I forgot a really, really important thing to let you know about since I'm reviewing autopilot um, and one of those things is phantom braking you know since it's a little bit darker I felt like you know maybe now would be a good time to film this clip but uh, man Tesla what are we doing with the phantom braking like I get it sometimes it thinks that maybe the car from the left is gonna come over and it freaks out a little bit or it sees something that isn't actually there um, but you know Phantom braking is definitely not fun. I do not recommend it. Um, it, it is it is no good, no good at all. So Tesla, let's get that fixed um, because it isn't. It, it's just that that's probably one of the worst things about autopilot. And I also wanted to talk real quick about construction zones. Um, we had a little bit of phantom braking right there. It is it is freaking out. It does not like all these cars all around here. Um, but during construction zones, you know, it'll show up on the map that we've got the little orange cones and stuff pretty neat But it will it, it will definitely like kind of beep beep at you and like want you to like have your hands on the wheel a little bit extra um, While you're going through a construction zone and sometimes it will just slow down during a con construction zone even if the speed limit is above in Florida, I know it was like 35 mile per hour is the regular like construction zone speed unless un otherwise stated i'm not sure it's probably like 30 or 25 in oregon but um 
anyways, it it will seemingly slow down to less than 40 in certain construction zones, just depending on the type of road it is and stuff. So pretty interesting little thing to note there. Uh, but overall, like autopilot, I'm, I have to give you like a 95%, like autopilot's awesome. Life is completely different and much better with autopilot. So anyways, I think that maybe that's the end of this autopilot video. I'm not really sure. I'm kind of horrible at figuring out when the end of the video is. So anyways, thanks again for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to leave me a like if you have any suggestions for the future. Feel free to leave me a comment, and if you like my content, feel free to subscribe. Thanks, and I'll see you on the next one.